In the Gospel reading today, we hear about our Lord coming to, to Lazarus, talking to his sisters, Martha and Mary, and each one of the sisters crying out to him and saying, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But Jesus said that this was going to be for the glory of God. And we know that he called Lazarus out of the tomb, brought him back to life. But what is important about this is not so much bringing Lazarus back to life, because poor Lazarus, after being dead for four days, had to die again. This wasn't a resurrection, this was a resuscitation. So what is important is the point that Martha made and what we hear at the end of the gospel. When Jesus tells Martha that your brother will rise again, she says, yes, I know he will on the resurrection on the last day. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. And he asked her point blank, do you believe this? And she said, yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. At the end of the gospel, after the people saw what Jesus did in calling Lazarus out, once again we read that the people began to believe in him. And so it comes now to our own selves. And we have to ask those questions for ourselves. On one hand, we all know what the answers are. I'm not asking for an answer from your head. I'm asking you to look into your heart and answer the question. Do you believe that Jesus is the Christ? Do you believe that he is the Son of God? Do you believe that he is the one who is to come into the world? Do you believe that he is the only one who can save your soul? Do you believe that he is the one who will open your grave so that you will rise from it one day? Do you believe in the resurrection from the dead? Do you believe in life everlasting in heaven? In just a couple of minutes, we're all going to profess all of those things. But we've all memorized the creed. We all know the words. And we can all recite it without even thinking about it. So that's why I'm asking you to go a little deeper, to really think about it. What do these things mean? Do they really affect you? Do they mean anything to you? Those are the kinds of things that each one of us needs to be wrestling with. Because if we look at it and say, yes, I believe, then we need to live our lives in accordance with that. If we look at it and go, yeah, I, I suppose, you know, Jesus is the Christ, whatever. It's like, yeah, whatever. Do we really believe? Do we really have faith? Do we really have confidence in the Lord? See, the only way we're going to be able to get there is first to make that act of faith, to look at what is presented to us in the scriptures. We can read the lives of the saints. We can see what the church has taught. But there still has to come a point within our own selves where we have to say yes. This has to come from the heart, not from the head because we've all been taught and we all know the right answers, as I said earlier. But I'm not interested in the right answer. I'm interested in saving our souls. Because on the day that you stand before Jesus, it's not going to be a catechism test. It's going to be a question of what's in your heart. You have to know the catechism. You have to know the answers. But it's not just a matter of having a handy answer in your head. We have to believe in our hearts. We have to have a deep faith that we are going to put into practice. Because when push comes to shove, having a catechism answer isn't going to do anything. 
For instance, let's say, and hopefully this isn't going to happen to anybody here, but let's say that you had an opportunity to be a martyr. Somebody's threatening to kill you. Do you look at it and go, well, guess, you know, Jesus is the Son of God. He's the Christ. Hmm, whatever. Because if that's all you're going to do, you're going to panic. You're going to say, I, I, I don't want to do this. If in the depths of your heart you can say, Jesus is the Son of God. He's the Christ. He's the Savior of my soul. If I die, praise God, I get to go to heaven. But if we don't have that faith, if all we do is know the answer, we're not going to remain faithful when push comes to shove. And for every one of us, the day is going to come when push comes to shove. Because every one of us is going to die one day. Hopefully, it's not for a long time in the future, but we don't know the end or the day. We don't know the hour. So if God were to call you home today, are you ready? In your heart? Not only meaning, are you in the state of grace, but are you able to stand before the Lord and profess exactly what Martha did? Yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, the one who is coming into the world. Can you profess that you believe absolutely in the resurrection from the dead? That your body, every one of us here, is going to rise from the dead one day, and our bodies are going to be reunited with our souls? If you look at any of those questions, you go, I, I don't know. I mean, you know, that, that sounds kind of hard. Then we need to start digging into this. Don't just let it sit out there as an I don't know or this is hard to listen to. If there is some unsurety, work toward getting the surety. Read, study, ask, whatever it is that needs to happen. What do you need to be able to get that into your heart? What do you need to have the confidence and the surety so that it's not just a generic catechism answer that's in your head? Because one day, every last person on the face of the earth will stand before Jesus Christ as their judge. Everyone. And catechism answers aren't going to cut it. What's in our head needs to lead to what's in the heart. So again, we have to learn, we have to know, but now we have to get it down deeper and we have to be willing to act upon it. That's what St. Paul was talking about, if the Spirit of Christ dwells in you. That's the Spirit, to be able to have the truth and the love of the Lord in our hearts. That's where Jesus wants to be, in our hearts. So whether it's asking yourself, do you really believe that Jesus is truly present in the Blessed Sacrament? that he's going to enter into you, that he wants to be in your heart, that he wants to love you and be united with you? Do you believe in eternal life, that you're going to be with Jesus forever? And those are the kinds of things that we have to look at. Like I said, if there's any question, if there's any doubt, do something to remove the doubt. Get to that point of being able to say, yes, Lord, I believe. That's what he's looking for from each one of us. Not just, yeah, I guess I can accept that. Yeah, okay, maybe. But confidence in the heart to be able to know, to be able to embrace it, to be able to have that confidence in the Lord so that we can stand before him with confidence. 
so that we can have that absolute certitude because he is the Son of God, because he made the promises, because he said it. That's what we want. We learn that from Martha. We learn that from Mary. Remember, we're told at the beginning of the gospel, this is the same Mary who anointed the Lord with perfumed oil. She's the one who came behind him and cried on his feet because of her sins. So whatever sins we've got, we can repent. We can get our life turned around. We can get on track. But there's only one place to get our sins forgiven, and that's Jesus. If he's not the Son of God, if he's not the Savior of the world, if he's not the Redeemer of my soul, then I can't have my sins forgiven, and there's no hope for eternal life. So these aren't just eh, whatever kind of questions. These are critical questions that get to the heart of everything for every one of us. So don't keep these things at an arm's distance. And don't just keep them in your head. He wants the truth and he wants the love in your heart. So it's to come to know him, which can really only happen through prayer. And as you come to know him, you come to have the confidence, the absolute faith and the trust so that no matter what happens, that's not going to be shaken. That's what he's looking for from each one of us. So whether it's that trust and confidence and faith in who he is or in his promises that follow from who he is, whether it's the little things or the big ones. Remember he told us if someone's not faithful in the big things, they're not going to be, if they're not faithful in the little ones, they're not going to be faithful in the big ones either. If you want to say you want to go to heaven, you believe in eternal life, you believe in the resurrection, but you're not sure about these little things, how can you trust him with the big ones if you can't trust him with the little ones? He is God. He is absolutely trustworthy. He cannot lie. But the question isn't about him now. The question's about us. Do we believe that? Not in our head, but in our heart.